Joining us now on the MMA Fight Corner, UFC middleweight Tim Kennedy, who's fighting Michael Bisping in the main event of the Ultimate Fighter Nations finale, April 16th. That's this Wednesday. Tim, there has been some bad blood boiling here uh, up to the leading up to this fight. How badly at this point do you just want to get in there? I'm excited uh, for Wednesday night to get here. I'm uh, um, looking forward finally be able to punch in that, punch in that guy in the face. And what was it that, that started this whole, the bad blood? What was it that started everything? What fueled the fire? Um, a few years ago, he fought one of my friends, Jorge Rivera. And um, in, in that fight, he illegally kneed Jorge while he was on the ground. Um, and in today's MMA, and even then it was illegal, but today he had been disqualified and... Um, you know, he probably would have been suspended. And but I don't know why um, he wasn't in that fight. It still bottles my mind. Um, and then after the fight, he's like running around as if he just won the fight, even though he just illegally needs somebody in the head. And then he uh, he goes and spits on on Jorge's corner, a guy named Matt Finney, who's also my friend. So one night he illegally knees one of my friends in the face and then spits on my other friend. So from that juncture on, I was like, ah, man, I don't like this guy. Uh, a lot of that came from the Ranger Up video that was produced before that fight, kind of uh, getting into Michael Bisping's head, making fun of the pillow fists and and so on. And, and you seem to take off right where George and Ranger Up left off, you know, obviously in same sponsorship and everything. But you guys... You're really, really getting at him and getting into his head, trying to get him angry. Uh, is that what your intention is? Do you want Michael Bisping as angry and maybe distracted as possible? Um, I don't care how he is on Wednesday night. Um, it could be the best version. It could be a distracted version. It could be an angry version. Um, you know, it's, regardless, it's going to be a version that's going to get beat. Um uh, was I trying to irritate him? Get understand? Yeah, you know, I, of course, um, you know. But I'm, I'm hoping for the best version. Of Michael Bisping wins tonight because I want to beat beat up the best version, so he has no excuses. The other thing about Bisbing is that he had called himself, I mean, this was more directed towards Luke Rockhold. You know, he called himself the unofficial Strike Force champion. And being that you're the first guy from Strike Force to, to face him since he said that, do you feel like you have even uh, something to prove for those guys? Um, you know, I, I think all the Strike Force guys since they've gotten to the UFC are doing you know, not surprising on my end, but to everyone else's well. And, um, you know, there's no, there's no doubt that, you know, my fellow strike force fighters are going to kind of be cheering for me and, um, wanting me to, you know, get a win on with tonight. Same thing that I do for them you know, when they fight, you know, there's kind of, a each of the respective promotions that, that have been absorbed by the UFC, you know, the WC and, and, um, and strike force, IFL, you know, where we all kind of band together and we're like, yeah, go, go, go. <laughs> uh, and that's no different here. And how much of an advantage do you feel it is to you that he's been out for about a full year with that eye injury? I don't think it's going to change anything um, on Wednesday night, honestly. I, th I think he's going to, you know, the best way to get rid of ring rest is to train hard. And I, I, th I think, and I hope he's been training hard. Um, I'm expecting him to not have any you're talking about michael and uh you know just just the type of person he is that you don't like him at all do you think michael bisbing puts on an act or do you think he really is that type of person uh a little bit of both you know um when i, I think he recognizes that there's opportunity for him to be um popular being outspoken and you know being controversial, but I think a lot of it is just him, and uh, it's kind of sad, but <laughs> that's, that's who he is, I guess. Now you've, I'm sorry, you, that, that's pretty funny. You bring up, um, you brought up the camaraderie that you've had with uh, the Strike Force guys have, have had coming in. They all want to wanted to make a point, and you kind of all stand behind each other. 
But you also, uh, with your military experience, and we're seeing a lot more uh, military members joining MMA after their service, is there a kind of a unspoken bond and camaraderie between you guys as well? Uh, military guys? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. We, um, you know, we, I, I have no idea, you know, like how it works, but, you know, once you've served, you're, you're kind of always just loyal to that community. Um, you know, there's nothing like, like a friendship forged in war. And, um, so, yeah, I get a lot of fans that there's, there's very little I would do or could do that would make them not support me in every way gotcha and now when it, when it comes to actually you know being in active service and the things that you've seen and been through not only just the training but just the life experiences how does it compare getting into a cage i mean guys talk about the fact that you know there's nothing scarier nothing more dangerous than than being locked in a cage with another man that pretty much wants to hurt you but you know that kind of seems like small potatoes i, I think for you I mean, a fight's a fight's still a big deal. You know, you're um, there's a lot going on when you're in there, and you know, there's no there's no way to get around the fact that you're you know you're in a cage, and um, you know, there's a dude standing across from you that wants to knock you out or submit you. Um, but when I'm in there, it's still just a you know, it's a sport contest to me. There's nothing that would ever change. Uh, you know, it's so vastly different from from anything that happens uh, in war that you know I, I can't even draw any similarities between the two. You know, lately Bisping's been talking about a win over you is going to get him a title shot, and rightfully so, he deserves one. Uh, is what he thinks. Do you think a win over Michael Bisping puts you in title contention? Um, I don't know how you know a number five ranked guy um, can say he's going to be fighting for the title. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and let alone the number eight ranked guy. So no, I think I'm going to have to do more um, than you know a win over Michael Bisping to to earn a title shot. Just looking at that overall picture, wh- how important is this win? I mean, it would take you to three and zero. It's a really like the first key ranked opponent that you faced in the UFC. So how how big of a, a win would this be for you? It's a big fight. Um, a big fight for a bunch of reasons. You know, not only is it that I'm, you know, fighting one of the top ranked guys. Um, not only am I kind of trying to prove that I deserve to be fighting the most elite guys, but uh, you know, I'm fighting kind of a rivalry. So you know, it's it's definitely important. Well, great, Tim. We'd like to thank you so much for your time and joining us here on the MMA Fight Corner, and all the best of luck to you in your fight, man. Yes, yeah, thank you.